So I'm now recording, so please pay attention. That would be great. So we're going to use the bisection method to try and find a root for this particular piece of mathematics between 1 and 1.5. Okay? So this has a root between 1 and 1.5. And this is the way I'm going to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is recognise that a bisection method always uses this table. I need a number, which I'm going to put just over here. I need x0 and a y0 that goes with it. I need an x1 and a y1 that goes with it. And an x mid and a y mid that goes with it. Okay? And that's quite important. And please take the time and trouble in the exam of actually using a ruler. Okay? It won't hurt you. Okay, I haven't got the world's greatest ruler here, and that doesn't matter. I don't need I'm not actually measuring anything. Okay. And I've already got a line there. So my first go says x0 is 1. X1 is 1.5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trick on your calculator that says if I say 1 goes into, and so I'm using this arrow button here, and then I use the alpha plus button, x is now 1. If I press the equals button, I get a 1 there, look. So now I can actually type into my calculator exactly what this says. 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8. And I've just typed it exactly as it appears on my piece of paper. I press my equals button and I get negative 3. Which means that this number 1 gives me an answer of negative 3. So now, playing exactly the same game, but this time 1.5 goes into x. You don't have to do it this way, but I think it's quite easy. And I think it saves any mistakes. Okay? So now I've got 2 x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8 and I get 6.625 let's be clear about what's happened I want this to be equaling 0 that's how I find a root this one gives me negative so it's too small this one gives me positive so it's too big now I must have a negative and a positive sometimes it's the other way around but often it's this way around. Now what I'm going to do to find my x mid is I'm going to do 1 plus 1.5 divide by 2. So I'm going to add these two together, divide by 2 and get an answer. So let's just do that on my calculator. 1.5 plus 1 equals divide by 2 equals. And now I'm going to make that my new x. So my x mid is 1.25 and here I go again. So I'm now going to do 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8. And I get 0 0.6328125. Can you give me your attention, please? Now the key thing here, and this is the bit you've got to remember for everything, okay? Is that now, this is 1 gives me negative 3, 1.5 gives me positive this, 1.25 gives me another positive answer. Now when I'm trying to get 0, this positive answer is better than this one. Okay, and this is the rule. You only replace a positive with a positive and a negative with a negative. So this is a positive one. So I'm now going to replace here. So I'm going to put 1.25 here. And my y mid I already know. 0 0.6328125. So this means that this one is the same. So that's 1 and negative 3. You don't have to do a lot of extra calculation up. And when I've done those two, that is the end of the first cycle. The first cycle through only completes when you are ready for the next cycle. Okay? 
So a lot of people I get asked, get asked to do, do two cycles or do three cycles, and they don't. They do like two and a half. All right, it only completes when you've written these two down. So now I've got to work out the middle of these two numbers because I know the answer is between 1 and 1.25. So I type in my calculator 1 plus 1.25 divide by 2 and I get 1.125. That becomes my new x and I type in 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8 and by now you should be seeing what's going on and this time I got negative 1.4213867119 and so this is negative which means I'm going to replace this one with that one and incidentally that's why I don't tend to put the extra line down here because I'm replacing all of that with all of this so my third step is to put a 1.125 there, put a negative 1.4213867119 there, leave this one alone this time. And this is my absolute definitive answer, look. I've replaced a negative with a negative. And now I've completed, how many cycles have I completed? Two. This is the completion. So now I add these two numbers together again. And can you see I'm much better now? I started off with negative 3 and 6-ish. Then I went negative 3 and 0.6. Now I've got negative 1.2. Remember, I'm trying to find what value here gives me a zero answer. Okay, so now I'm going to try again. So I've now got 1.125 plus 1.25 is, divide by 2 is, and that's 1.1875. Put that into x. And now away I go again. I use my calculators functions. It's a useful function. 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8. And that gives me another negative. And that's okay. 0.46041871. I'm running out of room. Okay, so now which one am I going to replace? The negative one. Because I always replace a negative with a negative. So step number four, I've got 1.1875. Gives you negative 0.46041870012. This stays the same, 1.25. Okay, and I've now completed three cycles. Now the test question usually asks you, please carry out three cycles. Now you can see I could keep going like this forever. Okay, the test is actually asking you, can you do the bisection method? That's what it's asking for. So now I'm going to, I'm going to do one more for you just so you get the idea. So I've got that number there. 1.1875 plus that number there, 1.25 equals, divide by 2 equals. So now I'm going to try 1.21875. Okay, and this is quite important, and you'll see why this is important in a moment. I'm going to go into x, and now I'm going to do my classical 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x minus 8 and I get a positive answer 0.068788 and I'm going to run out of room so now I'm going to replace the positive with the positive can you pay attention please so step number 5 1.1875 gives me negative 0.4604187012 1.21875 gives me 0.068788 blah 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 blah. So I've now completed how many steps? Four. Four. Now what I want you to look at is 1.18 to one decimal place is 1.2. 
1.21875 to one decimal place is 1.2. They're the same. Now to two decimal places at the moment they're different. This one is 1.19. This one is 1.22. So to two decimal places they're different. But to one decimal place, they're the same. So the answer to the question, remember, was when is this zero, is going to be 1.2 to one decimal place. And now I've answered my question in two ways. The question might say, carry out three complete iterations. In other words, get to number four. It might say, what is the answer to one decimal place? There you go. So you're going to have to read the question. And that's how you do the bisection method.